Hey everyone, I'm Travis Spivey, joined with my son, Jordan Spivey, and if you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button so don't miss out on any of our science videos. Also, scan the QR code in the top left corner of the screen to contact us and explore more of our awesome content and material. In today's video, we'll cover the properties of the states of matter. So, so let's, let's do this. Our learning circuit for today is, I can describe and explain the properties of the states of matter. So, what is a solid? Solids are usually hard because the molecules have been packed together. You might ask, is baby powder a solid? It's soft and powdery. Baby powder is also a solid. It's just a ground down piece of talc. Solids can be hard, soft, big, or small like grains of sand. The key is that the solids hold their shape and don't flow like a liquid. A rock will always look like a rock unless something happens to it. The same goes for a diamond. Even when you grind up a solid into a powder, you will see tiny pieces of that solid under a microscope. Liquids will flow and fill up any shape of container. Solids tend to keep their shape. In the same way that a solid holds its shape, the atoms inside of a solid are not allowed to move around too much. Instead, they just vibrate in place. This is one of the physical characteristics of solids. Atoms and molecules in liquids and gases are bouncing and floating around, free to move where they want. The molecules in a solid are stuck in a specific structure or arrangement of atoms. The atoms still spin and the electrons fly around, but the entire atom will not change position. Solids can be made up of many things. They can have pure elements or a variety of compounds inside. When you get more than one type of compound in a solid, it is called a mixture. Most rocks are mixtures of many different compounds. Concrete is a good example of a man-made mixture. Granite is another example of a mixture. It is made up of little pieces of quartz, mica, and other particles. Because all of the little pieces are spread through the rock in an uneven way, scientists call it a heterogeneous mixture. This is important because there are different concentrations of specific particles in different parts of the rock. On the other end of the spectrum from a mixture is something called a crystal. When a solid is made up of a pure substance and forms slowly, it can become a crystal. Not all pure substances form crystals because it is a very delicate process. The atoms are arranged in a regularly repeated pattern called a crystal lattice. A crystal lattice is a very exact organization of atoms. A good example is carbon. A diamond is a perfect crystal lattice of carbon, while the graphite arrangement of carbon atoms is more random and disorganized. You can find graphite in your pencils. For carbon, those two different structures, crystal lattice versus random arrangement, are called allotropes. The second state of matter we will discuss is a liquid. Solids are things you can hold that maintain their shape. Gases are floating around you or trapped in bubbles. So what is a liquid? Let's look at some examples of liquids. Well, first of all, water is a liquid, your blood is a liquid, and liquids are in between states of matter. They can be found between the solid and gas states. They don't have to be made up of the same molecules. If you have a variety of materials dissolved in a liquid, it is called a solution. One characteristic of a liquid is that it will fill up the shape of a container. If you pour some juice in a cup, it will fill up the bottom of the cup first and then fill the rest. The juice will also take the shape of the cup. The top part of a liquid would usually have a flat surface. That flat surface is the result of gravity pulling on the molecules. Putting an ice cube or solid into a cup will leave you with a cube in the middle of the cup because it is a solid. The shape of the solid cube won't change until the ice becomes a liquid. Another trait of a liquid is that it is difficult to compress. When you compress something, you measure out a certain amount of material and force it into a smaller space. Solids are very difficult to compress and gases are very easy. Solids are in the middle but tend to be difficult. When you compress something, you force the atoms closer together. When the pressure goes up, substances are compressed. Liquids already have their own atoms close together so they are hard to compress. Many shock absorbers and cars compress liquids into sealed tubes. A special force keeps liquids together. Those intermolecular forces make sure that the molecules of the liquid stick to each other. Solids are stuck together and you have to force them apart. Gases bounce everywhere and they try to spread themselves out. Liquids actually want to stick together. There will always be the occasional evaporation where extra heat energy gets a molecule excited and the molecule leaves the system. Overall, Liquids have cohesive, sticky forces that work to hold the molecules together. Let's take a look at gases. 
Gas is everywhere. There is something called the atmosphere. That is a big layer of gas that surrounds the Earth. Gases are random groups of atoms. In solids, atoms and molecules are compact and close together. Liquids have atoms that are spread out a little more. Gases are really spread out and atoms and molecules are full of energy. They are bouncing around constantly. Gases can fill a container of any size or shape, and it doesn't even matter how big the container is. The molecules still spread out to fill the whole space equally. That is one of their physical characteristics. Think about a balloon. No matter what shape you make the balloon, it will be evenly filled with the gas molecules. The molecules are spread equally throughout the entire balloon. Liquids can only fill the bottom of the container, while gases can fill it entirely. The shape of liquids is really dependent on the force of gravity while gases are light enough to have a little more freedom to move. You might hear the term vapor. Vapor and gas mean the same thing. The word vapor is used to describe gases that are usually found as liquids. Good examples are water or mercury. Compounds like carbon dioxide are usually gases at room temperature, so scientists will rarely talk about carbon dioxide vapor. Water and mercury are liquids at room temperature, so they get the vapor title when they are in a gaseous phase. Gases hold huge amounts of energy and their molecules are spread out as much as possible. With very little pressure, when compared to liquids and solids, those molecules can be compressed. It happens all of the time. Combinations of pressure and decreasing temperature force gases into tubes that we use every day. You might see compressed air in a spray bottle or feel the carbon dioxide rush out of a can of soda. Those are both examples of gas forced into a smaller space than it would want and the gas escapes the first chance it gets. The gas molecules move from an area of high pressure to one of low pressure. So let's talk about plasma. Plasmas are a lot like gases, but the atoms are different because they are made up of free electrons and ions of an element such as neon. You don't find naturally occurring plasmas too often when you walk around. They are things that happen regularly on Earth. If you have ever heard of the northern lights or ball lightning, you might know that those are types of plasmas. It takes a very special environment to keep plasmas going. They are different and unique from the other states of matter. Plasma is different from a gas because it is made up of groups of positively and negatively charged particles. In neon gas, the electrons are all bound to the nucleus. In neon plasma, the electrons are free to move around the system. While natural plasmas aren't found around you that often, man-made plasmas are everywhere. Think about fluorescent light bulbs. They are not regular light bulbs. Inside the long tube is a gas. Electricity flows through the tube when the light is turned on. The electricity acts as the energy source and charges up the gas. This charging and exciting of the atoms creates glowing plasma inside the bulb. The electricity helps to strip the gas molecules of their electrons. Another example of plasma is a neon sign. Just like a fluorescent light, neon signs are glass tubes filled with gas. When the light is turned on, the electricity flows through the tube. The electricity charges the gas and creates plasma inside of the tube. The plasma glows a special color depending on what kind of gas is inside. Inert gases are usually used in science to create different colors. Noble gases such as helium, neon, argon, and xenon are all used in science. You also see plasma when you look at stars. Stars are big balls of gases at really high temperatures. The high temperatures charge up the atoms and create plasma. Stars are a good example of how the temperature of plasmas can be very different. Fluorescent lights are cold compared to really hot stars. However, there are still both forms of plasma, even with the different physical characteristics. And that's our video for today. Now let's test your knowledge to see how proficient you are with describing and explaining the properties of the states of matter by taking our video quiz. Use your electronic device to scan the QR code at the top right of the screen, or you can click the link in the description box below the video to take the quiz. Remember, 80% or higher for proficiency, record your results on your proficiency sheet, and if you don't get it the first time, you better keep going because it's not over until you win. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button, click that bell icon, and also scan the QR code to contact us and explore more of our awesome content and material. Peace and have a positive, productive day.